It's been almost one week since the deadly explosion in Beirut took place and the hope of finding survivors now is diminishing as the days go by. Attention has now turned to the ruling elite of Lebanon and how years of corruption and mismanagement has led to a disaster of this scale. The anti-government protests have resumed in full swing. At one point during this weekend, protesters successfully stormed the ministry buildings and took control for a brief period. The security forces are responding with tear gas and water cannons. These protests are mainly centered around the parliament building and Martyr Square. Members of Lebanon's Human Rights Watch are asking why the security forces are being deployed to quell protests instead of relief work. Reports indicate that as many as 65 protesters were injured in this weekend protest and around 20 have been arrested since. On Sunday night, some of the protesters tried to breach the Lebanese parliament building. They were repelled with more tear gas and water cannons. The Lebanese Red Cross had to step in to treat the wounded. <laughs> Relief work is now continuing at the blast site, but these visuals that you see on your screens now tell you exactly why the odds are stacked against the relief workers. The blast left a 141 foot crater and leveled most warehouses in the vicinity. A senior Lebanese military official says that there is little to no hope of finding survivors. The government, meanwhile, took another hit on Sunday with the resignation of Environment Minister Dami Naus Akhtar. He blamed, and I quote, the sterile government for the massive explosion. Two Lebanese ministers have put in their papers along with several legislators and reports also say that Prime Minister Hassan Diab is considering the entire government's resignation